All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here. I'm at Elite FTS in Ohio. And a question that I wanted to go over today with everybody that I got was, how do you know if you have a bad coach? Now, it's an interesting question. You know, in this industry, there's no real regulation on who, who can coach, who cannot coach. There's no real governing body that says who's qualified and who's not qualified. So you really have no barrier to entry. That means anybody can declare themselves a coach on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or whatever. So it can become kind of hard for people who don't really have a background in this to really determine who the good coaches are. You know, just because someone has a set of abs doesn't necessarily mean that coach knows the most about getting leaner and staying healthy uh, and so forth. I think you get the idea, it's tough. But there are some things that you can kind of look out for if you're looking for a coach. So I wanna, I've got about five of these that popped into my head as I was asked this question. The first, uh, the first one was when you ask your coach why you're doing something and they say, because I told you to. Now I get it, listen, I come from an athletic background and football and wrestling and all that and you just do what the coaches tell you. But it is your right to understand why you're doing something. If a coach tells you, I don't want you to eat your breakfast anymore, or I want to add an hour of cardio. It's absolutely okay for you to ask that question because you should be learning as well. Now, I've had some clients that tell me, I don't care, just tell me what to do and that's fine. But if you're not one of those kind of people and you wanna learn and you wanna understand why you're doing things the way you are, then you absolutely should go to good, get a good answer from your coach when you ask him that. The because I told you so is not a good answer. So that's one thing to look out for. Number two, when you sign up with a coach and there's no real background information that he asks for, no questionnaire. If they don't ask you about your injury history, for example, uh, let's say you have a really, really bad back and they tell you to do heavy squats. Well, that might not work out real well for you. If you have some allergies to foods, if you are allergic to eggs or egg whites, and they tell you to eat two cups of egg whites in the morning, that's gonna be a problem. Um, so one of the first things that a coach should do is have this uh, way to gather data, like a questionnaire that asks what you like, what you don't like, what's your job like? Are you in a situation where you can eat more meals or do you have to eat less meals? Uh, what's your, you know, Again, what are your uh, insensitivities to foods and things like that? Um, what have you done in the past that worked well for you? What have you tried that didn't work well for you? There's a whole series of questions that a coach can ask you that'll give them very good information on kind of where to take your program. At least get you started. And then once you get started, you can adjust as you go. And that's one of the things that we do. We have a very detailed questionnaire. And I tell people, the more detail you put in there, the better your program's gonna be. So that would be number two. The coach, if, like it's a tip off. If the coach does no background checking on you at all in your situation, that's a red flag, not good. Number three, cookie cutter plans. If you talk to some other clients of that coach and you all have the same diet, you all have the same training plan, no matter if you're a 120 pound female or a 240 pound male, I know that sounds silly, but I can guarantee you there are a lot of coaches in this industry that do that. They have a they have a philosophy where it's a certain type of diet. Uh, and so you're gonna eat that type of diet no matter who you are. Um, and that doesn't really work well for everybody. You know, there's always gonna be the superstar clients that it does well with, but you don't see the, the large percentage of the other clients that really struggle with it because, you know, no, no consideration was, was taken into the, what I call the principle of individuality. Right, so these cookie cutter plans, whether it's uh, diets or, you know, there's, I've, the training part is interesting. I've built 37 different training programs and I try to think of, well, what if a person have, has weak legs? What if they have a weak back? What if they do low volume? What if they wanna do high volume? I build all these training programs to encompass a wide variety of situations. And there are some coaches that prescribe, they have like one training program. They just send it to everybody. It's the same one for everybody, no matter what. So that's a red flag, all these, this cookie cutter stuff. It just doesn't work, big red flag. Okay, number four would be response time. Now, the way I like to work is before I go to bed, I have every email answered, unless the emails come in late at night, and then it might be the next morning. But 
when I get messages uh, early in the day, before I go to bed, I have everything answered and I tell people, you know, give me 24 hours. I never, ever, ever, ever go beyond 24 hours. And then if it's a contest situation, you know, then we're working by text messages. But it's amazing to me. I've had many, many uh, people come to me and tell me their coach was taking three days, four days, sometimes seven days, just to answer a simple question. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's very, very common. And a lot of times it's the bigger name coaches. And the clients don't really say anything. They don't want to be looked at as kind of the, you know, the bad client or the client that complains. And then I talk to them. I'm like, no, you should. If they told you up front, allow three days, then they've set that expectation. You know, whereas I tell people 24 hours. So it's all about the expectations. But if they tell you I'm going to respond fast and it's a week later, that's an issue, particularly if you're in like a contest prep situation. So you should, ha you should have a very clear understanding of what the expectations are in terms of response time. Because a lot of times we get busy, you know, like if I'm training in the gym, I'm not going to answer questions right then. I'm going to wait till I get home. So it may not be immediate. But those expectations are what need to be set so that you know when you're going to get your responses. And just personally, in my opinion, anything over 24 hours is unacceptable. Uh, unless somebody's on vacation and they say, listen, this is my one week a year where I'm on vacation. Please give me a week. I get that. But just as a general business rule, I personally think anything over 24 hours is ridiculous. So that would be number four. Number five, you provide feedback, but the coach doesn't listen. Maybe you say, well, you know what, uh, coach, my, um, my lower back's really, really hurting today. And, and, you know, we got a heavy squat workout coming up. I'm a little concerned about it. And the coach says, I don't care. You're going to squat anyway. Or you might say, you know what, my meals aren't digesting real well. I feel really bloated. I don't feel good. And the coach says, I don't care. Shove the meals down anyway. Force them down. There's a um, – there's a fine line there. Uh, when somebody gives you feedback as a coach, you have to take that feedback and you have to respond to it. That's the whole point of a coach. It's, to, it's for the client to provide a set of data and how they're doing um, in terms of their, their strength, their pumps, their hunger, their sleep, all that stuff. And then the coach will take that data and they will make an informed decision on the next step that you take. And when you're providing that data to the coach and the coach doesn't listen, that's a problem. That's a problem. That coach is not doing a good job. Um, and then the other thing I would say is the second part of that is the coach oftentimes should be probing you. If you're not giving the details that you should give, or maybe the coach just should have some extra questions. You know, yesterday, for example, I had some people checking in that I had cut their calories a little bit, and I said, how is your strength doing? I just wanted to see if the calorie cut had hurt her strength or whether it was normal for the last week. It's just me wanting to understand. I had another guy who I had just cut his calories pretty significantly, 400 calories. It was a pretty aggressive cut. And I said, how was your pumps? I wanted to, I wanted to see how it affected his, his pumps because I took calories away from the window outside of training. So I was thinking his pumps would be okay, but I wanted to make sure. So there's a process there, communication that needs to take place. And if you don't have that, then, you know, that's a problem. All right, I'm going to give you a sixth one. It's kind of a bonus one. And it's, um, it's tricky because a lot of people will say the coach has to look a certain way. And yes and no. There are some coaches out there that maybe don't compete, that can still do a good job of coaching. But generally speaking, there are going to be situations that the coach has had to had some personal experience with, or at least work with people in that situation with. I would never get somebody to coach me for a bodybuilding show that just has straight book knowledge. Because there's gonna be points in the diet where I'm feeling a certain way, where the book isn't gonna provide the answers that they need. The book isn't gonna tell them that I need a refeed or whatever. There's just certain things that you have to learn by experience. You can argue with me all day long on that, but I'm a firm believer in experience does matter. It helps you, particularly when you get to the tough situations. You can do all the basic science stuff to get you to a certain level, but then there's another level above that where now it becomes more mentally challenging. Now it becomes working through mental challenges. It becomes working through extreme exhaustion, things like that, knowing when to add extra food in to pull it out. Is it just one meal? Is it a whole day? Those things take trial and error. So 
I would say that you need a, you don't have to have a coach that has a lot of experience, but if you given the choice between the two, I'm going to take somebody who has a lot of experience that's seen a lot of different situations. If they've worked with themselves, that's even better. But um, I do think experience is valuable, and it makes me sad when people just don't value experience. Um, so that's your, that's your bonus. So I hope this helped. If you're looking for uh, a coach, just want you have some ideas on what to look for, what, uh, what can be some red flags and things in terms of what to avoid. Um, that's it. We'll see you next time.